Exchange for Media. With me today are two brightest minds of media industry, Mr. Naveen Khemka, CEO, South Asia Media, Essence Media Com, and Ms. Sonali Malvea, Chief Strategy and Transformation Officer, Essence Media Com, South Asia. So thank you Hi, for Naveen. talking to us after the merger. And uh, tell us how it's been these nine months because you also must have been experiencing, you know, all the changes that have come with merger. Yeah, I think I think very exciting. I would say I think each one of us in MediaCom and Essence uh, really looking forward to this uh, because we really wanted uh, you know uh, uh, so so actually if you look at MediaCom and if you look at MediaCom and the way MediaCom was uh, was born and the way MediaCom scaled up globally and in India, so I call that uh, the era one of advertising. Uh, this is the era one of advertising where scale is important, size is important, you have to have blue chip clients and, and Mediacom has done so well in that, locally here and globally. Then there is the era two of advertising, which is slightly more digital, which is where Essence got born globally and also in India. Mm -hmm. Digital clients, Google was their former client and did so well for Google and mm -hmm. set up tools, systems, processes, which were so, so up there, you know, so top of class. And Essence did so well. And now what I am saying this merger is actually era 3 of advertising. The era 3 is neither scaled nor digitized. It is actually becoming very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. By sophistication what I mean right now is that today it's not the scale, not your digital expertise, but your ability to be able to holistically understand uh, the complexity in which the consumer is going through with so many platforms emerging. So it's not creative first now. It's platform first and therefore your solutions have to be very platform agnostic. So I think that given... That's really very interesting way of explaining. Yeah, so I would say this era three of advertising is what gives birth to Essence MediaCom. And we are really poised now to be able to drive this journey for our clients. No other agency I can tell you huh, in the world now is so well poised to deliver on this. So Nali, what, how would you like to add to that? Well... For us as well, the last nine months have been super exciting. And I think all of us, because the beauty of our group is that nobody is a stranger to each other. So we've all kind of been together anyway. We've all understood and actually appreciated the complementarity that the two agencies had brought to each other. Even before the merger officially happened, I think there were projects that we were collaborating on, working together. People and teams knew each other. We both understood and respected each other's strengths and we came together to support each other's areas of opportunity. So for all of us, it has been completely something that we've looked forward to. It's never been about, oh my God, what's going to happen? But it's always been about how soon can we go and hit the ground running? So that's been one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is about how the two, and like I talked about complementarity, how the two really beautifully come together to not just drive scale and a lot of planning um, efficiencies and effectiveness that Mediacom already had in their stable, but also to drive outcomes that Essence has been really known for. And imagine being able to bring them all together in the service of our consumers and our clients and literally move to the third era, just like what Naveen explained right now, in the service of our audiences. Move away from platforms, move away from <coughs> talking just media output and actually drive outcomes that make clients successful with their uh, consumers and audiences. So yes, we've loved it. We've loved the journey and everybody is completely charged about what comes next. Now, I mean, how has your role changed from CEO of MediaCom to now CEO of Essence MediaCom? Yeah, I think pretty much from a job profile point of view, I think it remains the same, right? But however, let me tell you, suddenly when I met the entire team of Essence MediaCom, it hits you, right? And suddenly it's such a large agency with about six, eight hundred people all together. We had town halls. Yes. Me and Sonali went to Delhi, Bombay, ba Bangalore, met all our teams together, launched the agencies across three locations. <coughs> suddenly that evening, I, you know, I went home and I, and I told my wife that, you know, I'm feeling a bit pressured. Huh? I'm feeling very responsible now huh? for so many people in my team huh? to help make their careers grow and then obviously have so many clients and their expectations and to manage everybody. So yeah, I, I'm a bit, 
I am a bit jittery. I, 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 because I feel a lot of pressure right now. I'm a bit more responsible, I guess. A lot, lot many more grey hair on my head. <laughs> huh? So yeah. But so, Ali, how about you? You also plan to have some grey hair? No <laughs> <laughs> chance of that. <laughs> but um, I think I'm just super excited about it. My role changes, mm-hmm. and it changes in a space that I've always loved. Mm-hmm. I am somebody who's always gone after driving outcomes, driving business results. I don't think a job is complete until you actually are able to add impact back to client businesses. And this gives me that great opportunity. Alongside that, and I think that, as Naveen said, that this is a really (coughs) overwhelming responsibility because you have to be true to your clients and true to your people. And with both of us taking on very clear roles and, of course, working very, very closely together, we actually are able to do a lot more for this and and in the service of everything we're expected to do and ultimately not feeling alone that you're actually running alone and you have to take it. So this this is a great place where we can come together and two heads are always better than one. So I love the change. I love the opportunity to interact deeper with clients and to add a lot more meaning to to what is the aspiration is to partner them in the most deepest and meaningful ways. It's important that we have clear focus behind those outcomes as well. And and I love the opportunity to be able to drive that. So Naveen, there, there is this internal pressure that has come to you now because your team has become much bigger and all. But there were also some external pressures last few months, you know, uh, funding to startups has dried up. Uh, there were these things that, you know, India may also have recession, there was global slowdown. How has all of that impacted Addix? And then there is this new form, you know, you... you, you of there. course, of course. So, so you know, I must tell you, uh, I mean, last year was tough, right? All of us. And if you look at the broadcasters, if you look at the, the our, our digital partners, everybody was saying that, yes, last year, given that the inflation levels were so high, Companies had to deliver margins. The easiest thing to cut was marketing, advertising budgets. Budgets went down. It obviously had a trickle-down effect on, on media. Startup funding dried up and therefore that had a trickle-down effect on media. So therefore it was almost like a double double whammy, right? Higher inflation on one end. You know, listed companies wanted to show profits. Uh, startup funding died, uh, drying down and, and therefore having an impact on index. Yeah, it was tough. But let me tell you, as Essence Media.com, even last year, we grew. We grew hugely. We grew. Yes. So, yeah, that's the and that's what uh, that's what Nick also told you, right? That yes, this is my high growth market. And let me tell you, in the last three to five years, we've been the top performing market for uh, uh, globally across uh, all our markets in terms of uh, percentage growth. Even the, even though the base might be small, so that's where the as far as the growth is coming from, and and the reason for that is we we are always hungry for more. We keep going and we keep meeting new clients. We keep pitching for new businesses. We don't. We don't keep, uh, you know, staying with the existing set of clients. We want to keep adding more and more and more. So that is one mindset that I think the entire agency has built over the last uh, couple of years that I've been there. And that's really working really well for us. It's de-risking us also from a slowdown eventually that might hit us. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So, what, and what was your, uh, the other, other point? This, uh, have things started to improve? Yeah. So this year, uh, so this year what we are seeing mm-hmm. right now is, uh, uh, again, January was extremely slow. Um, February, March onwards, we are looking at a lot of summer categories, uh, giving us briefs and st- things have started to look up. Um, uh, startups still slow right now, I would say. However, uh, with women's IPL coming up and the men's IPL starting in, in April, and the men's IPL for the first time in two years coming back to the country uh, with home and away matches, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, all the activations possible on the home ground. So I think, I think it is going to be a sellout. And also the other thing to note here is the first time in the last five to seven years that IPL today is going to be sold by two different broadcasters. So the television broadcaster and the digital broadcaster, each one, each one trying to reset for themselves what you could expect from a viewership point of view. And that is a very interesting fight that is going on right now in the market. It will only help, let me tell you, it will only help unlock the true potential of IPL. And that's what I've been telling them that you are now because of the pressure that everybody is on will try and get more and more advertisers on board, make it much more flexible, easier, uh, locally possible to be able to advertise on IPL. It will not be anymore a big daddy's game, Mm -hmm. but I should the success of IPL will depend if you are able to increase it from 100 advertisers to 500 advertisers. So, yeah, so I'm very 100 percent. 
So if the number of feeds that they are investing in, if they are opening up their entire feeds, so today what stops a local Tamil advertiser who is present only in Chennai to be present in a Chennai Super Kings match? Nothing stops him today. And that's the advertiser you actually want to board. No, because that's where the ratings are. So yeah, so so yeah, I'm very very hopeful. I have, I'm having a lot of chats with them and also guiding them mm -hmm. as to what to do. But yeah, but I'm very hopeful if this happens, we could really see a new age economy around IPL growing much much bigger and better. So Nadi, you've handled many new age clients, you know, as as a sales CEO. Uh, how have the expectations from agencies changed in the last two years? You know, before I answer that, I'll just give you a brief context one. Right? how new age clients have also evolved over the last few years. Growth was always the key driver and the small businesses they were trying to scale up or, or the larger ones. Regardless, new age clients have always focused first on growth. Now that growth manifested itself first as acquisitions and everybody was going after the most efficient acquisitions. The next stage came once they started seeing and understanding that there was a lot of churn in their consumers because they weren't really de engaging deeply and they were focusing more on acquisitions is when they started to build and say, hang on, we need to now start focusing on our brands as well because that is what the differentiator is. Otherwise, everybody is on the same playing field and the minute the next person comes, they're going to just move. So then they started focusing a little bit on brand. Fast forward to this year. Everything became or late last year when everything started to become harder. We talked about how funding had started to dry up. I don't know if it's completely dried up or investors have become a lot more cautious, cautious. because suddenly everybody is looking at profitability. And here comes the challenge. Now it's about driving growth because that bottom line has to keep moving, but also about driving engagement and making sure that you retain those customers that you have acquired. So that has become their uh, sphere of reference because now it's no longer just about acquisition or about running the brand. It all has to move together. Fast forward to the expectation from agencies. When they started on, it was about saying, how do we go to agencies who can get us the best deals, who can get us most impact, who can get us efficiently for us. But as they started moving forward, they were like, okay, we need consulting. We need you to be partners in our growth and partners in all the expectations that the that our investors and our ecosystem has from us. And that is how the role has changed. Today, conversations are not just about media or media deals that you're doing. They're about, okay, hang on, help me build my tech stack. Mm -hmm. Help me with my content becoming a lot more effective. So Nick spoke about how messaging is really important. So help us create messaging that's addressable, that's at scale, that is that makes sense and is actually resonating with our customers. And we want to make sure that all of it has return on investment for us. The other bit is about when you're engaging deeply with your customers, how are you building a whole framework around advocacy? And that is extremely important as well. So all of those are equations where we partner with our clients. And today, therefore, if we have to be partners to clients, they expect us to be on the same playing field, understand their business and be responsible for their outcomes just as they are, and then drive them in the most effective way possible. It's no longer just about efficiency, it's a lot more about effectiveness. So I think in that, we've also grown and we've also evolved our capabilities and our strengths to start driving those. So are you working more like partners? Than Most certainly. Agencies. As consultants, but I think our advantage is that we're consultants who are responsible for outcomes as well because we're driving them and we're in real time able to optimize and see what's working for us, what's not working for us, so that we can course correct, change, and it becomes a much more virtuous cycle because we're responsible not just for the thinking, but also for the implementation and, and measurement of that. So, Naveen, before we close, uh, you already have Coke, you have PNG, you have Uber, you have all, you have very big clients from uh, most yeah. categories. What are some of the new categories that you would like to add to your kitty? I mean, the more the merrier. So, uh, that's okay. We won't say no to any category, I understand. Uh, however, however, yeah, there are some, so we've done a whole need, their entire gap analysis as we, as, as we call it, right? And we've done all of that. 
a lot of work in progress on yes. that and sonali is working very closely with all of us on that so uh, so i would say uh, i would say the the key category uh, I, i would want to focus on is obviously uh, auto or two wheeler four wheeler we are not there in that category at all so it's a big category in india large spending category among the top 10 categories in the country for the addex point of view we must be there there is no questions about that and we will get there uh, so um, so obviously i can't i can't tell you more on that and outside of that i i would say uh, currently uh, currently within the, within the bfsi sector india is really growing if you look at the new age startups that are coming up it's all in the bfsi if you look at the traditional bfsi companies also now want to create very large brands mm -hmm. because of the historical uh, you know the, the what should i say the, histor the historical presence that they have in the country but they haven't done much so i see a lot of action in the bfsi sector which we should be able to target and given especially given our strength in, in this market in mumbai we are sitting right now uh, outside of that uh, i would say within fmcg there are newer categories emerging so yeah there are some open slots there so we would definitely want to want to want to get into that and uh, outside the categories i would definitely say that uh, um, uh, at least four markets in my mind within india that we want to expand but two definitely this year So two markets that we are entering right now are uh, Ahmedabad, okay. and we are entering Kolkata. Uh, Kolkata, we already want two, three clients, two, three underway. So okay. if that happens, then we'll have a nice fifteen twenty number team there. And and Ahmedabad also, we just closed one client. So hopefully, we should be able to service it right now out of Bombay, but eventually maybe open an office there. And and then in the next uh, couple of years, uh, then want to also open a Hyderabad office and a Chennai office. So yeah, so yes. Apart from clients, it's also the your expansion into number of cities is important. Give us, you know, give us huge opportunities for our people internally. Help to make them grow also, uh, and to be more relevant to more number of clients. We wish I'll, you all the best. Yeah, thank sorry. you. No, I'll just add to because we keep talking about this as well. I think um, we also want to go after clients who will challenge our defaults and give us an opportunity to partner. People who are willing to take a punt on us, and that that goes for our existing clients as well as our new clients to say that. With us, you know, increasing our scope and and our depth of services so much, it's really important that we also get those opportunities. So every client who's willing to partner and take a chance with us, despite all the legacy that media agencies technically have had in the past or traditionally have had in the past, I think this is a really amazing opportunity. We wish you all the best. We really wish you lots of clients. You have a big target to meet. Yes, we <laughs> want you to double your billing by next uh, in next five years. We we'll do it so, in three years. Seriously, double your share. But thank you. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you. Thank you. Thank you so much.